Amen. Won't you stand? You had your Bibles? Going to be reading a number of verses of Scripture tonight. Uh, not while we're standing, thank God, but uh, obviously I've been on the a specific topic on Thursdays, and I really feel led to uh, preach on that same topic. Right. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, familiar verse of Scripture. Now, obviously taught from this in the uh, session on Thursday. Amen. If you have it, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you don't have it, hurry up. Or just look on the screen. I think we, 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 we get so much with technology now, we can't, we don't know how to flip through our pages and get the scriptures. And we get kind of rusty. That's true now. Actually, you know, I would know scriptures, bang, bang, where they are in memory. It's all full of this thing. I, I'm, oh, I, I knew where this scripture used to be. So I don't know. It's just they dumbing down America. And I'm falling suit. Shame on me. Anyway, praise God. Verse number one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, everybody say holy. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. You can be seated. I want to talk to you, obviously, on the subject of holiness. Because he is holy. Paul, in addressing the Roman church, as I mentioned, thirsty, appeal to not only the Roman church, but also appeal to every Christian that would read this particular epistle to the Romans. It was the responsibility of every elder of every church to read the epistles of other to other cities and other churches it was their responsibility to have every, the, his people read these verses also or at least they, these letters because it was for the entire church the bible is not an outdated book it's not about things that were written for people in the first century. And the Bible was written to uh, transcend time. It was written to cover uh, all dispensations. And it was written uh, for our admonition and our example. When we see scripture, we are to apply that particular scripture as if it was written to us, handwritten with our name in, on it, and signed and delivered to us. Amen. Uh, I know some live by the, uh, the idea of, well, I, I don't know about this particular verse of Scripture. I had some tell me, well, you know what? This is not, the, well, uh, I, I don't know, the apostles wrote that. That wasn't, they only kind of go, but they put priority on the words if it's written in red. They give more attention to it because Jesus wrote it or said it because he didn't write any of it. Now, he is the author of all of it. And it doesn't matter who he uh, used to pen it. It's the word of God. Amen. Some people want to dissect the Bible and say, and I know it's broken down into chapters and verses, but it wasn't like that. It was epistles that were written. Amen. And it was books that were written in the Old Testament. And, and I know we like to break down the Old Testament and the New Testament, but to be quite honest, it's the book. It's the Bible. Amen. I, and I, I, I know we do that, but I, I don't really know about that. 
I, I, I don't believe when, uh, when they started writing the, uh, the epistles and, and then Paul said, well, you know what, that's found in the Old Testament. No, when you read, they just say it's scripture. It was scripture. And, and so we have to take this word as the word of God and apply the word of God to our life regardless of the day we live in, regardless of the society you live in, regardless of the culture you live in. People like to take the word of God and try to make it fit their culture. Paul is communicating to all the church, no matter what your culture is, what the color of your skin is, doesn't matter what type of money you have or don't have, this is for you. He said, I beseech you, brethren and sisters, therefore that you, you by the mercies of God, I'm appealing to you according to God's mercy. Everything I'm about to say, it's not because I, I have an ax to grind or that God is some judge waiting to crush us over the top of the head because he's just a harsh and hard God. No, I'm appealing to the church and the churches anywhere and everywhere at any time period that this is by the mercies of God. God's mercy is his caringness. It's his, it's his uh, passion, if you will, and his compassion. It's, it's how he feels about us. Everything God has allowed to come about in our life that we don't deserve and things that we deserve we don't get, it stems from his mercy. Even his grace actually extend, uh, extends from his mercy. The very first thing that was in the God and was the mercy of God before the grace of God was manifested. And so God, he's appealing, and the Bible lets us know that we're saved according to the mercy of God. We're saved by grace according to the mercy, and that's in uh, uh, Titus chapter 3 in verse 3 through verse number 6 and 7 and according to his mercy he saved us and by grace we are saved and, and he's appealing to us because of God's merciful nature he can't even give us grace until he's merciful unto us you can't get the merit of God, the unmerited favor of God. You can't get the blessing of God. You can't get the, the grace of God, the power of God, and everything working in your life until God is merciful unto you. And so he's saying, I'm appealing to you. I'm letting you know where this is coming from. It's, it's stemming from God's mercy. It has nothing to do with his judgment nature. It has nothing to do with his iron fist and, and, and his iron hand. He's not coming to you saying, you better do, you better, you better wise up. Amen. He's not coming from the standpoint, if you don't do this, God is going to crush you. God is going to send you to hell if you don't do this. He's not coming from the standpoint of you're not going to make it. You're never, if you don't do this and this, you better do everything I tell you to do. And sometimes it's a portrayal of you better do what God tells you to do or God is going to. When it comes to teaching about being holy. And God never approached it from that standpoint. He said, I am holy, so you be holy. You are my children, and because I have this nature, I want you to have this nature. Because I had this character, I want you to have this character. Holiness was never from a standpoint of, I'll crush you if you don't do this. And, and unfortunately, unfortunately, the church, especially in the early days, did a bad job with the, the holiness issue. I, that's just a fact. And especially now, and, uh, you know, and so either you have some people driving it and killing people and you better, you know, you, they, they, you know, they got the, the measuring tapes at the door. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
That's not godly. Paul said, I'm beseeching you by the mercies of God that you present yourself. It's a living sacrifice. It's something that you do willingly. That's why you don't demand holiness. You can't force holiness. You can't force anyone. If someone is forced to be holy, they're not holy. God said it's a choice. Be holy because I'm holy. I'm appealing to you by my mercy. That you present yourself, present yourself as a living sacrifice. And then he said, guess what? It's your reasonable service. It's not something you're being forced to do. It's reasonable. It's acceptable. You ought to be saying, oh, yes. Now, unfortunately, that's not like the case. Unfortunately, I'm just going to tell you like this. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to get too far off on, you know, but it is a Sunday night. And, you know, normally you say, don't worry, I'm not going to get all into certain things so I can do it on a Sunday night and I know it's not a Thursday. But, you know, you, this is what we're supposed to be. Holy unto him. See, I, I can feel people getting a little uncomfortable. You get to talk about holy, holy, the people get uncomfortable. Oh, you can't. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I, I, this is on a Sunday night, and I'm like, do I, should I be doing this on a Sunday night? Because people, people want to be preached to. People don't want to be ministered to. Let me, let me get this thing straight about hold. It's not a dress code or a rule book. It's not a dress code or a rule book. Look at, look at that. It's not a rule book. It's not a dress code. I'm presenting myself as a living sacrifice. Meaning I'm willingly giving myself to Jesus. You know, one of, you know one of my prayers in the morning? God, I give myself to you totally. God, I give my whole day to you. See, that, that's, the, that's the problem. I'm going to kind of interject something on prayer right here before I go on. They say, that's the thing about, if you, you, you know, you get up and you get to getting on your way and all that. And you say, well, I guess I'll go ahead and pray in the car. Shama, mama. Fa la la. Yep, God, whatever. The problem with that is that you haven't given yourself to him yet. And you started your day already. And so because you haven't given yourself to him, surrendered yourself to him, now you're in control. And you're, you, you, you're not in the will of God because you hadn't surrendered yourself to him. You hadn't surrendered yourself as a living sacrifice. And now you're asking God to bless everything that you do. You don't have to ask God to bless what you do when you're surrendered to him. Hello? When you present to God everything, my whole day, everything belongs to you. You surrender that thing over to God. You don't have to ask God, bless this, God. Because you're going to be doing his will and his plan. Now, he, uh, he knows you have to work. But you know what? I, I, I got to, and I'm off, I'm off the subject for a second. I got a sneaky suspicion that sometimes when you're in the will of God, and you, you tap into the Holy Ghost. The first thing in the morning, and you let God take control of your day. And, uh, I, I'm guarantee you, 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 one day you're going to let God take control of your day, and you think you're ready to go to work, and he says, no, don't go. Amen. 
Now, see, some of y'all, y'all, your flesh told y'all, no, don't go. <laughs> that wasn't God. <laughs> Woke up in the morning, flesh said, no, don't go. You got up and went shopping and all that, did that and the other, everything you wanted to do, everything you wanted to get done. Didn't pray, didn't seek God and all that. God wasn't in there. So God's going to test to see whether you're going to surrender your. And you're behind it. I hate to use that word. I hate to. I am, I'm not going to use it. Say behind the, <laughs> the, the, the eight ball. You know how they say it. I, I, you know, because some of y'all think. <laughs> we, 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 we have to get this on holiness. I know I've been teaching it and everything else. And, and I've been doing a lot of journal stuff. But I'm just. It, if we don't do something. And have the right concept. We're not going to have the revival we need to have. It is to be quite frank. If we don't, you don't touch on holiness, and you don't really have to teach it because you know we don't preach it from the pulpit. I've been teaching on on the Thursday recently, but I, I what you, you hadn't heard me teach, preach from from the, on that, because you can't make somebody do anything. And that's not the goal anyway. You preach the word of God and let the spirit of God and the word of God. But it's not, it's, it's not about a, a dress. Well, it's not about that. But we got to understand the day and the age that we're living in. Because if we're not careful, I don't care how, how much Holy Ghost you have. If you're not, you're not careful, you'll let the world begin to influence your you see it throughout churches now. And, and, and it, it's, I'm sorry, it's effect, affecting the holiness movement. It, it's affecting apostolics and Pentecostals. Now, I don't believe everybody in the church should look alike. Because that means we're not doing our job. I, I want some spiked heads in here. I want some people walking in here with their pants all the way down here. I know y'all don't want that. I want that. I want somebody here with their head and face all tattooed up. Got 50 earrings in one nose. I guess it won't be earrings, it'll be just rings. See, some of y'all don't want that. Y'all just want, oh, look at that. See, Jesus loved those type of people. I don't want everybody looking at like in here. Now, I, I'm sure if they don't have something that's permanent, I believe that the Holy Ghost will move them to a place of, you know what? I want to be like him. I'm fine just as I am. Just as he created me. I don't need any additives. And so all holiness is it's getting closer to God and getting more like that. My body, a living sacrifice. And we don't have to pressure people. We don't have to force people. But I'm going to tell you this. If we don't get this, we're going to have the wrong attitude. And then some of us say, well, you know what? Pastors ain't say anything to them. Man, look at all that. Now, I'm just going to say it like this. If you have more people that are brand new in God and new in God, 
than you had been, been around for a while? Those of you who've been around for a while, what are you going to do with it? Oh. The Bible says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that, that, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He said, woe unto them. Woe unto them. I'm telling you what, we, we live in that day right now, right here. There's never been a day on the planet, uh, uh, on, on the planet Earth that's been like the day that we live in where everything that's good people call evil. I'm sorry, you got people who, who leave, leave, uh, leave the fellowship. And they want to drag the church down. Yeah, those people in there. Those people in there. You know, and you know, uh, God, I, I'm trying not, not to, I don't want to be critical or mean or whatever. But we, we, we have to be careful, folks. And, and you get to hanging around people to start talking about the church, you better leave. I don't mean lead a church. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I, oh my God! When I first came to, first got into church, and 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 we were trying to get. Well, we, I didn't first get just get into church because we were married by then, so it had to have been at least a year afterwards and whatever she. Swept me off my feet after, you know, I was trying to get my, I'm trying to get my feet settled, you know, in the Lord, and she sweeped me off my feet. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and so we start fellowshipping with people and, and everything else. And we, you know, we just, we just stupid. <laughs> I know, you, you don't supposed to say that. My, my, my granddaughter's going to say, you don't supposed to say that, Pop Pop. <laughs> we just didn't know anything. We just thought everybody loved God. Everybody just got along. And everything was just so wonderful and all that. We, we, didn't really like, we didn't know there was all types of vessels in the house. In the great house, you got everything. <laughs> and we just, just stupid. Like, oh, okay. That's just fellowship. Oh, let's just have a good time. We all over there. We having a good time. You know, everything. We are breaking out the popcorn. We 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 having fun. They said, "Let me tell you something." Now you need to be careful. I said, "What were you talking about?" You know, you don't don't become a rightite. What? Rightite? Well, that's the bishop, right? Bishop, right? He wasn't a bishop. He was a pastor. Eh? Don't become a rightite. You see, there's some people that, you know, you got to make, you got to think for yourself and you got to make your decision. And you can't, don't people want to just try to be like that? And I'm like, well, my wife and I, we start looking at each other like, do you, do you see that? What? I couldn't believe it. Guess what? We stopped going over there. You let people separate you from your, your leadership. Oh, hallelujah. You let people separate you from the fellowship. You let people separate you from your God. No relationship whether platonic or, or any other type of involvement, it's worth someone start talking about the church and the people in church. You better mark them to cause division among you, the Bible says. Now, my wife, she, before she was my wife, was she came around me talking all that foolishness. She wouldn't have been my wife. <laughs> you said I ain't y'all. I'll see you when I get now. <laughs> yeah. we, we got to be careful. Now, I know I'm supposed to be talking about being whole, but... We, I,
this world. Oh, God didn't, he didn't want me to get off this thing. I said, when people start talking about the church, and I'm not talking about the, the, the building. Now, there's all sorts of stuff in the church, folks. I, it, what, what amazes me is how people want to talk about the church and they're going to hang with people out there. And you know, you know the stuff they're doing out there. Well, you know that, you know, she such and such. Well, guess what she did? The sister, you know, and she had a bad attitude and all that. And, you know, and, and then you go hang with somebody out there. Like they doing everything right. But no, it's the church that judge. I don't want to go to church because they judge me. It killed me how the people out there always judging the church. Oh, you know it's right. People always judge. I don't want to go there. You know, all them women, you know how they dress. And we want to judge us. Why are you worrying about what we wearing? I don't care what you wear. Why you worrying about what I'm wearing? There are people I've been, I've been pastoring this church for years. There are people I have not said a word to about what they put on. Sometimes I had to go like this. I don't say a word to them. And I won't if I don't. Whatever. But yet they want to say something about the people who want to wear what they want to wear here. I don't get that. And we're judging. I'm not judging anybody. There's one that's going to judge you. I leave that up to him. That's why in the funeral, I try to stay away from preaching people in heaven. And I definitely try to stay away from pre preaching people in hell. So I just start preaching about Jesus when I go to do funerals. I keep it safe. They're in a better place. So I'll just stay away from that. I'm right here. I don't know where they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I got a funny feeling when I get there, I'm going to see a whole lot of people I ain't expect to. And I'm going to see people. I, I, where's such and such? Well, uh, they, they down there. <laughs> what? No, they ain't. Nope. No, man. Yeah, I don't know. We cannot afford to accommodate our culture. Oh, hallelujah. When you dress and then you go out, I know I'm talking about dressing. I know it's, that's, the, that's the omen. Talking about dressing in the church. That's an omen. It's crazy how this twisted world is. You can't talk about dressing in church, but that's all they talk about out there. What you got? What jeans you wearing? You know what I mean? Then they display. Everything. You talk about, you know, you see what they got on out, but you can't, we can't discuss it in the church. It's so twisted. Oh, you better not say that. Oh, you better not. No, 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 no. We have liberty in the church. Oh, uh, don't tell me you don't have liberty. Now, I'm just going to tell you like this. You don't have liberty in the world. Now, I'm just going to tell you like this. Huh? Won't you dress like the holiest person you think is trying to be holy than now, and you go around your friends in the world... And see, won't they judge you and look you up and down? And you say, well, people look you up and down in the church. You go out there. Oh, why, why are you having them? Why are you doing And matter of fact, you can't hang with them. You can't hang with them unless you look like them. And you don't feel comfortable hanging with them unless you look like them. Don't let the world, well, I'm telling you, we cannot be duped. Church, I'm talking to the church. This world has so many double standards, it's ridiculous. Yes, 
Turn on the TV. They telling you how to look. Turn on the radio. They telling you how to look. They telling you they, what is acceptable to them. But the church can't say what's acceptable and according to the book. We can't let the cult. The culture says what you know. That's evil, and that's really good. That's what culture says. Yeah. yeah. Everything that's good, the culture says, is evil. And everything that's evil, the culture says, oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and so all the pressure to be like culture on men and women. See, women, you thought they're just picking on us because we're females. And you see guys walking around like this. <laughs> tight. And when you got to walk like this, you know that ain't right. Something ain't right. You see guys running. I think you run better if you just... <laughs> And what in the world do you have a belt on for? <laughs> but it's cool. Now, now, this is the thing now. You just get a beard and let it grow all the way out. I guarantee you in a few years you're going to cut it. Because before when you had all that, that wasn't right. Then, you, you know, you had to have that tight fate, you know. And then all of a sudden, now you got to have to get the, the braids hanging all out down, down there. Then that just got, you know, whatever the world says, just do it. Because that's what the world says. And people listen to it. But they don't, don't know. But you can't have that type of thing in the church, though. Hello? You can't have that in the church. Well, why not? All I'm saying is you free this liberty in the church because, to be honest, I don't care what you wear. So y'all thought that was y'all. That's a shocker, didn't you? I don't care what you wear, but God does. <laughs> God does. Oh, He doesn't. Oh, yes, He does. You have a, 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 a 13 year old girl, right? And I know I'm walking back and forth. I'm sorry, cameraman. As soon as I break it up there. You have a 13 year old girl, you know. Who, do we have any 13 year olds? How old are you? No, right here. Mm -hmm. You're 10. Now, she's 10. Now. Now, what if a 10-year-old, let me turn 11 and say, you know, Ma, okay, I want to go out and I want to wear my thing right here, right? And I want to wear my blouse right here. And I only want to cover it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put three rings in my nose and put whatever. Well, well, you know. Now, a lot of parents are going to say, well, no, you're, you're not quite whatever. Right. What I'm saying is that somewhere along the line, normally parents step in yeah. and say something. Yeah. Normally. normally. Right. Now, I, I don't know if it's gotten out of hand already where it's 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> Now, the, the, I'm just saying that parents normally say something or try to say something. Now, I'm just, I, you know, at, at, at what point does a girl get ugly? 
What is it? 11, 12. What point do a girl get ugly? Now, seriously. At what point do a girl, does a girl get ugly? You know what I mean, because you're ugly, so now you got to do something about your face. Because something happens at some point, right? You're ugly because you got to do something about it. See, that's what the world tells us. They don't tell you all along, you're cute, you're pretty and everything else. Then all of a sudden, you're ugly. You need something. I'll leave it like that. And God says, see, 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 see God says the opposite. That's why I tell you the world judge you. They tell you you're ugly. And God says, you know what? I like you just as you are. See, that's not judging. And you know what the church says? I like you just as you are. That's not judging to me. You see, it's twisted. We, we, we can't fall under deception. I know I, I, I had some stuff I really wanted to talk about. I really did. I had some good stuff I wanted to talk about. I, I, I really did. Oh, man, I got some good stuff I wanted to talk about. It, it, it's really not about practices or what we practice. It's not about our practice. It's about God's principles. And, you know, what you, pra- you know it, it, it's not about our practice. It's about the principles of God. He said, be holy. He said, present yourself as a living sacrifice. The church didn't say that. All we're doing is reading the same book. I didn't write the book. Now, if I wrote the book, I probably said some other stuff. Amen. I didn't write the book. He wrote the book. Oh, hallelujah. And quite frankly, according to the Bible, it's non-negotiable. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which it's non-negotiable. Oh, hallelujah. See, we, we want to ne- negotiate with God. And he says, you know what? Huh, God, I got a deal for you. I got a sweet deal, Lord. God says, nope. It's non-negotiable. I, he says, I tell you the deal. You repent. You turn from your sins. And you let me be the Lord in your life, and I'll save you. So here's the deal. If you want to be the Lord in your life and rule your own life, tell your own self what to do, I can't save you. You see, he can't be your savior unless he's your Lord. And if you're the final authority in your life, you're not. Oh, hallelujah. If you're not the final authority in your life, I'm sorry, if you are the final authority, he's not Lord in your life. If there's not one area, any, if there's, I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. If there's any area in your life that God can't tell you, you're, ultimately, you're the Lord in your life. If there is, I know this is hard to swallow. That's a big pill. Take the, whole, take the horse pill. If, if, if there is any area in your life that you, say, you leave off God, well, that's one thing. This is my, I, you know. And see, that is the problem because what we do is say, God, you can have my heart. You can have my spirit. How do you know God has your heart? At what point do you know God has your heart? At what point do you know God has your spirit? You don't know when God has your heart, and you don't know when God has your spirit until you surrender your body. When you have surrendered your body to him, now he knows everything belongs to him. And that's normally the last thing that people give to him. Oh, you, can come on the, you can come on the inside of me, but this outside belongs to me. On the outside. (laughs) 
I'm talking about being holy as he is holy. Sound man must not like what I'm saying. I'm starting to get kind of... <laughs> I'm just messing. You young people, this day and age we live in, when I say young people, if you're, if you're younger than 40, you're young. If you're older than 40, I'm sorry. <laughs> you with me. <laughs> You, you, you're 40 and over, you're not mid-age anymore. Just, just get over it. You have another alternative. You only have one alternative to getting old. Amen. And we're all growing old together. There's nobody getting younger. I don't care, I don't care what uh, uh, um, plastic surgeon you go to. You're not getting any younger. He can fix it all up. He can try to play God all over your body. You still get no. And after he finished acting like Dr. Frankenstein, years later, you're going to look like Frankenstein. I, I see people that I, I grew up with and all that, and, and when I see my wife say, you went to school with them, them? They look like, I'm like, yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's not my natural genes. I know my mother would like to think so. That's, uh, I'm sorry, sweetie. <laughs> I, believe, I believe God. When you keep your body pure, Keep your body that belong to him when well, you're not putting all sorts of junk in it or on it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. I say it happens all the time. I'm like, oh, my goodness. It's good when I see, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, whoo wee. I, I mean, I had some people, it's like, my goodness, they look like they can be my father. Look like they can be my father's father. <laughs> the Bible says, and I'm almost done, because I'm, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y, completely, fully, all of you. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, not just part of your spirit, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Holiness affects every part of you. All of you. So when you say, God, I belong to you. Not just in word, but also in deed. In principle. It's your principle. It's not about our practices. It's about his principle. God is coming back for a holy church. Without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. People don't want to talk about this topic. I know I'm not preaching 100 miles an hour. The Bible says, but we're a chosen generation. You've been chosen by God, folks. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. That word peculiar doesn't necessarily mean you're strange, even though I know we're a little strange. It means a purchased property. It's like I'm giving up ownership. You look at some translations. It doesn't even say, it doesn't say 
where Procurius says, a purchased possession in many translations. We are a purchased possession. God owns me. And I'm so glad, and ownership seems like a cruel thing for some people in some cultures of people. But I don't allow my current culture to, to put a bad spin on me being a servant of Christ. Paul said, I'm a slave of Christ. And there are certain people will say, you see, that is, you know, that, that, that's, that's the omen, that, 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 that's taboo, and, 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 and the certain man says that, and I don't mind because, you know what, I don't really, I don't, I, I hadn't seen Jesus yet. So I don't know what, a good thing about having seen, I don't know what color he is, I could care less. Because it's not, color is not an issue. Because we're all one race of people. And do not let, and since, do not let people put that stuff on you. That's ignorance. And what kills me is that it's easy, see, people, they, people who are not like them, they say, these people are this way. And they say they're wrong, but then they turn around and do the same thing. I hate to get on this note, but I'm on this note and I'm getting ready to close. I know I said this about five minutes ago. But I remember when Barack Obama was running for office the first time. And I had, uh, I, I, uh, I, I worked in a pen. And so, you know, you had, it was only three African Americans in there. And everybody else were of a different nationality. It was different nationalities. And, uh, and so the two other people that worked with me, they were, they had their BSN. They were nurses. And so the ones was like, well, I know you're going to vote for what." I know she said, well, you made a comment or whatever, like she assumed I was going to vote for Barack because he was black. She said, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to do such and such. And I said, we? What do you mean we? She said, yeah, we, we, or whatever. I said, hold on, what do you mean we? Well, you know, because, you know, I know you're going to vote for him, right? And, and I said, um, so I said, why? why, why? Well, you know, because he's one of us. I said, oh. So, you know, because you know that, that, you know, that's what they, and I'm like, hold up. So it's not okay for them to do it. But you're saying it's okay for you to do it. You are insulting my intelligence because you're telling me I should vote for him because he's black? Now, whether I vote for him or not makes no difference. But you try trying to tell me I'm going to vote for somebody because I'm black, because they're black. Now, that's not a good reason to vote for somebody. I'm sorry. If, you, if that is in you, you need to get that out of you because that's not what Jesus is about. I, I, I went to a church recently. I, wasn't in the ch I went there to do something else. And there was so much stuff about the black this, black that, black this, black that. I'm like, you're not giving Jesus any chance. <laughs> Could you imagine? Now, if, if Jesus did, don't have any, I know some people think he's black. I, you know, give me a break. He was a Jew. I do know that. Well, some Jews are black. Well, okay, whatever. But, you know, the, the, the problem is, you know, so all this black, 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 black stuff, right? So, right? So Jesus decides to roll in there, right? And flesh. And what if he's not what black? What is that church going to do? <laughs> Promoting all the black stuff. <laughs> How in the world Jesus is going to walk in the midst when all they're talking about is race? So it doesn't matter what skin, whether it's black, white, whatever. That shouldn't even matter. That even shouldn't be in the church. 
and shouldn't even be in the church. I'm only talking about the culture we live in, folks. This is the church of the living God. It belonged to him. And the last time I checked, God doesn't have a color. When he robed himself in flesh, he chose to come among the Jews. Now, whatever that was, that's his business. I hope and pray when we see Jesus, he's green. <laughs> Mess everybody up. Because I can really care less. I just want Jesus. Say when I see him, I'm going to be just as he is. I'm, I may be green for eternity. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just messing. I ain't messing. I'm not preaching any th theology. Don't get me off. I think you get the point that I'm trying to make. Hopefully you get the point I'm trying to make. Some of you say, he said Jesus was a marsh. I ain't say anything like that. <laughs> Holiness, folks. I want to be like Jesus. And the more I give of myself, the more he can be the Lord of my life and tell me what to do. He can't tell me what to do until I give up control of me. Tell me what to do, Jesus. Well, how can I if you hadn't given up control? Because people want direction, say they want direction, they say they want this and say they want that, and won't give up control. Stand up. It's like this. You know, don't, don't do anything back. <laughs> Now, 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 what I want you to do, uh, just kind of grab on me. Don't, don't get all, okay, there you go. Now, you rustling and fighting and tussling with Jesus? You know, tell me what you want me to do, Jesus. Tell me what you want me to do, Jesus, and, and I'll do it. And he said, you know what, I can't. How about you surrender first? Now. What you want me to do? Right. 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 Now I can do what he's asking me to. But I couldn't do that before when I'm wrestling with him. And when I'm in control, when I'm fighting to do my will, when I'm fighting to stay on top. Holiness is nothing more. I give up. I surrender. But people have tried to make, make it to be something else. And unfortunately, the world did that. But it's a shame that the church has made it something else. Holiness is pure, folks. And I know I've been talking about it, and, and, but I, I, I'm really trying to get it home. So you know what? You do this, and you really talk about the principles and everything else. You really don't even really have to talk a whole lot about the specifics. That's true. You don't. Because once people start surrendering, and they give up ownership of themselves, the Holy Ghost is going to do the rest, the Word of God. And the Holy Ghost is going to convict. I remember my wife, and I'm closing with this statement. I am closing. My wife had a dream. She came with that dream. This was when we, this was a year after we got married. Said, I, I had this dream, and, 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 and in this dream, I saw this person, and, 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 and blood was coming down, and they was ripping whatever, and, 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 and I think God wanted them to get rid of this stuff. And she was new in the Lord. We both were new in the Lord. God bless our, 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 our children. And I wasn't born in this and all that, so I was, you know, new. And I said, maybe God is talking to you 
about you. Maybe God is talking to us about us. Is there anything in your life that God can't tell you what to do, can't change? And I have a quick question. Because there are three sources of holiness. One through the word. One through the spirit of God. And other through the leadership of the church. And if you don't have the element of holiness coming from those three areas. You won't be whole in him. Because once you surrender all, areas of holiness will be communicated. And you will receive direction from each of those three areas. It will come through the word. It's going to come through the spirit. And it's going to come through the leadership of the church. That's ordained by God. Why am I getting on this subject? You could say, well, this is a Sunday night. I'm telling you. Mark it down. As this thing God is doing in the earth. And what the adversary in the world is doing in the earth. As these things collide, people in the church will, please place that scripture back on the, on the screen. Actually put verse number two on the screen, please. People in the church, verse number two, Romans 12, two, will be conformed to this world. More and more. And we are seeing it more and more. Churches are folding. You want to you wanna know why so many churches are folding and quitting and don't? And I mean, they're just folding. You want to know why? Now, not talking about like certain churches because of different things and all that. I'm talking about there is a something going on in the earth. And, and, and churches are folding. I'm going to tell you because the first thing they do, they start letting down their standards. Because they say, well, you know what? We're not going to keep anybody if we, we keep these standards. I tell you what, why, why are we growing then? I'm going to tell you, the apostolic church is not dying. It's growing. Now, that doesn't mean I know some churches are. Thank God for you two as a witness. Now, here's, here's, a, here's a pastor right here. He's pastor churches and, and everything else. He didn't back up, not one. His wife, his, his, his daughters, they didn't back off on the holding the standards. <laughs> not one iota. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's no compromise. Now, hear me. I didn't say anything for anybody to do anything. Don't leave out of this building and say, Pastor, you got to do this, and Pastor, tell you to change. No, you come here just as you are, just as you want to come here, and I'm not going to, if you allow me to pastor you in the word or whatever case, we'll take care of that in the right settings and appropriate time and everything else. But you, there is liberty in the church. And there's going to be continue to be liberty and church. And I don't, you, you know, you get people that get intimidated, but, you know, think, you know, well, people are going to think certain things if I don't have my church. First of all, it's not my church. Anytime a pastor tries to take ownership of the church, he, he missed it right there. This is not my church. I'm sorry. His church. Right. 
But I, I look at this group of people, this great group of people. You are influencing people like you don't, you, you just don't know. People are watching you. They're looking at you, not just here when you go out and everything else. You are a reflection of his glory. Will some mock? Sure, of course. Some will mock, but others are in admiration that you're choosing to have courage in a dark, evil world. You take your stand for God. And be willing to stand out because the darker it gets, the light shines brighter. If I had a match and I lit it right here, it wouldn't mean a thing. Take that same little match and turn off all the lights. That light, that match becomes so powerful. Don't complain about how dark it's getting. The darker it gets, people are going to recognize you even more. That's a child of God. Something is different about you. Won't you stand, please? We are a reflection. I know I didn't preach it, preach it hard. Come back Sunday morning. I think I'm preaching Sunday morning. I'll preach it hard. I'll, I'll scream and, and spit and foam and and all that, and make you feel like you. <laughs> See, I'll say that, and then the Lord is. Who do you belong to tonight? Who's in control of your life? Who's sitting on your throne? Won't you lift your hands where you are? It's 8.15. I, I blew it again. You didn't get out here early. He said he's coming for a church, purified church. The church is going to make herself ready. We live in a day and age that's putting so much pressure on us to be conformed to this world. But the scripture says we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we can prove that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Aren't you glad God chose you to represent him? You didn't do anything to earn it. You didn't deserve it. But God chose you. And he chose you to conform you into the image of his son. We can't allow the world, society, and our culture to shape and mold who we are in God. Holiness is not a chore. It's not some heavy burden. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm telling you what, we serve a good God. We serve a faithful God and a loving God, full of mercy, graciousness, kindness. Let's sit all over the house when we just begin to pray. I belong to you, Jesus. Because I surrender myself to you. You are mine. I give myself away all over again. We belong to you, Jesus. Take me, Lord. I'm yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make me holy, Lord, as you are holy. I want to be one with you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ against every spirit of deception, 
the spirit of this age that works in the children of disobedience. In the name of Jesus, loose your grace in our lives, grant repentance. Keep us holy before you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And let me say this, folks. As people are coming, being baptized, receiving the Holy Ghost, don't judge them. Don't look people up and down. Make them feel uncomfortable. Let God work in people's lives. Love on people. It's not our responsibility and our job to change people. It's His responsibility and His job to change people. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck, let them know you love them.